in the name of God, the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. Amen. God of all time, we praise you in this season of autumn. As we journey together through a new season of our life. This is a season of change and transformation. And we pray the same might be true for us and our lives. Creator God, just as the towering trees in this season lose their crisp golden leaves. We pray that we too might lose those things which burden us and weigh us down. As many beautiful flowers rest and prepare to bloom again in the spring. We pray that we too might appreciate the gift of rest and renewal. As temperatures plunge and icy paths begin to glisten. We pray that you might create in us warm and open hearts to both strangers and friends. As the orange and red flames of the bonfire burns. Set our hearts alight with a passion for your name in this season. Holy and eternal God. God of all beauty, seen and unseen. As we bring our hearts before you this day, we are eager to trust in your promises, that you are the God who journeys with us through these seasons of change, rest and renewal, and that we will trust in you, our maker and protector. Amen. Amen. This morning then, um, and for the rest of this week, we're mm -hmm. doing another little um, Holy Beam. Packet trilogy. Uh, so <laughs> so we're, we're taking the, the passage from 1 Corinthians 13, that I'm sure most Everyone of us will know quite know well, yeah, and looking at the concepts of faith, hope and love. So today we're going to be looking at faith. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanning cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. Love is not rude, envious, boastful or arrogant. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And now, faith, hope and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. So I've got two ponderings this morning. Two ponderings. Two ponderings. The first pondering um, is how many people had the 1 Corinthians 13 reading at their wedding because um, I'm curious, we did, hmm. um, we've got it engraved in our wedding rings as well, just the three yeah, words, obviously, not enough. all of them, um, but how many of you had that at your wedding, because I don't think we'll be the only one, strangely very enough, much um, and then the second thing I've been wondering, and I've been wondering this as I was drinking my coffee before we came, what's the difference between faith and trust? Hmm. So this, this is one of my ponderings today, is there a difference, and if so, what is the difference? And I'm looking at you, the great oracle of all things, to tell me this, this answer this morning. The great oracle of all things. Yeah, the difference between faith and trust. Because I was thinking about faith, and I would say that faith is having trust in God to always be there, mm. right? But then I was thinking, well, actually, is faith more than trust? And if so, how so? And then I thought Jez can tell me that. Um... <laughs> Do you think there's a difference? My first, my first thought as you ask that question is that faith is more than just trust. Uh -huh. That I think faith kind of um, brings in things like hope in a way that, that trust maybe doesn't. Um, 
So it's a kind of, I, I would say that you, we trust God mm-hmm. and that God is gonna gonna do something. Um, but actually we also, beyond that, have faith in kind of maybe why we trust that. So faith in the fact of who God is, as well as trust in what God will do. Okay. okay. And then because of, because the faith is kind of in who God is, that it comes with that sense of hope that God is love, God, God is just, God is merciful, all of these things. It gives us a hope that maybe just trusting God is going to do something. Okay. Perhaps okay. doesn't. Well, no, because I was thinking about how often we use the word um, faith generally in life. So um, I've got faith in the NHS. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got faith in my husband to always make me a cup of coffee when I not, when I want it. Um, so, you know, those things that we say we have faith in and how easily we use the word. Mm. But actually, maybe the word is trust rather than faith. Mm. I don't know. This is what I'm trying to yeah. tease out. Again, this is something where, where knowing any form of Greek or Hebrew mm. might be really helpful um, <laughs> to, to go through and look at what the different words might mean in mm. that. But um, I don't, so I, I can't guess. Okay. Um, but, but thinking of that idea of, of what we have faith in and what, what faith means to us, um, yeah, I mean, Bruce is saying a similar thing there about um, faith, hope and, and trust. The go two, together. Yeah, go yeah. together. Um, so, so, yeah, thinking about that, that concept of faith, as I say, I do think it is bigger than just trust. And so, as you say, the way we kind of talk about things every day, yeah. like what the word faith means to different people, um, would probably reflect that. Okay, okay. So the first thing that stood out to me was the one Corinthians reading, um, where it says, and if I have all faith as so as so as to remove mountains. Mm. And that's quite a faith, isn't it? Mm. Um, it strikes me that that's a faith that clings on even when we're going through really difficult times, that kind of the image in my head was like an obstacle. Mm. So, you know, you're kind of running through a road, down a road, and or a lane or a field, whatever you fancy running through. A wheat field. Yeah, but as you're running through um, and down the road, actually obstacles are being placed in your way, mm. and they almost try and make you turn around and make you halt and stop and, and not go any further. Mm. But thinking about faith being something that somehow um, you overcome those obstacles with God, because mm. God's with you. So maybe if you were on your own, you would be tempted to turn around and stop mm. and, and not go any further because we've got God somehow we can remove those obstacles from our path that was the image in my head mm. I know it sounds a bit naff but that was what I was thinking of as I was as I was reading that no I mean I, I think that's, uh, that's, that's yeah that's, that's a really good image actually because that that concept of uh, of moving mountains and having faith to do it I think shows that that that, that faith is bigger than trust because you, you'd never mm. have kind of trust that a mountain was just suddenly going to move itself yeah but but in having faith that that god can do that it, yeah. it shows that again it's just that bit bigger and it's not just about what god is going to do but again about mm. who god is and that god is the god of the impossible the god of surprises the god of miracles the god of hope yeah and, and so it's yeah. taking that that who god is into account as well as as well as what god can do okay and I think we see that possibly in the reading in the that you just flashed, flashed mm. up the Hebrews 11, because a lot of that talks about hoping for things that are not seen. Mm. Mm. And I think that's kind of um, certainly where if you spend any time online, whenever faith gets mentioned in, in various forums, you'll see kind of plenty of people jumping on it and saying, oh, well, you're just believing in the fairies at the bottom of the yeah. garden and all that kind of stuff. And how there's absolutely no evidence for it, so you shouldn't be believing any of it at all. Mm. And and thinking about actually, then, well, faith isn't just a thing to do with religion. Mm. Faith is bigger than that. And so talking about kind of from a scientific perspective, some of the theories that people have come up with about the way science works mm. don't have all the evidence that they need to say this is 100% right, but people believe them and have faith in them mm. because they haven't seen it, but they've seen the evidence of it. Mm. And I think in the same way that, that that's part of how my faith life works. I haven't seen God face to face, but I've experienced God and seen a lot of evidence of God. Yeah. I mean, what struck me most in this reading actually was verse two. Um, indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. And I was thinking about how we're part of a, you know, we're a small part of a really large story of faith. Mm. And it's almost through our faith that the faith of others and the stories of others continues, if mm. that makes sense. 
Um, so Hebrews 11 is the heroes of faith. We it is, like. yeah, it goes on to list. So, so I was thinking if, if we kind of didn't have faith and there wasn't Christian people around the world, then those stories of heroes of faith wouldn't live on. Like there would be no one to tell them and no one to talk of that faith that others had before us. Mm. Um, and yet here we are reading Hebrews 11, and if we'd carried on, we would have heard all of their faith stories. So just that reminder that, you know, our little faith story is part of a much bigger story mm. of faith. And that story of not really knowing all the answers and not having any sort of certainty about it because we haven't seen it, but somehow having that faith in our hearts that things are true. Mm. Yeah, definitely. And, and it, as you've said, it comes back again to stories in a way that we've talked about a lot in knowing the stories of God, knowing the stories of God's mm. people in our stories and, and thinking of all those times when when we've seen things happen, when we've experienced God, when we've mm. when we've witnessed those those things that shouldn't have happened, but have happened in some way and, and say, actually, that, that's that's part of the reason I have faith in that. I know my story. I know that God has been good to me. And I know that therefore God will be good to me again mm. and again because mm. of who God is, not just because of what God will do. Yeah. And I think that this verse raises, it raises a really interesting question because throughout the New Testament, um, we're referred to being justified by faith. Mm. And that's so often taken to mean is um, what well, our faith in God is what, what gives us salvation, mm. what, what repairs mm. that relationship, what brings us back into God's presence, if you like. Um, but actually reading through so much kind of, of stuff that written around Paul recently in particular, saying that actually that sounds an awful lot like salvation by works rather than mm. salvation by faith, because we have to do something in order to be saved. And so actually there is a suggestion that the faith that is talked about rather than our faith is the faith of Christ in us and the faithfulness of Christ mm. to us. Mm. And, and again, recognising that actually because because this is all about God and the work of God rather than anything we can do to earn it, that actually faithfulness at its most fundamental level comes back to God, not to us. Mm, mm. And that God is the one who remains faithful. Because we all know times that even after becoming Christian, after saying, yeah, we want to follow God with all we do, we don't, yeah. to put it bluntly. Yeah. Whereas God is the very epitome of what it means to yeah. have faith, to be yeah. faithful. And so follows that through for eternity, mm, mm. which I find to be a really yeah, interesting. Yeah, definitely different way of looking yeah, at that's it really we're not saved by faith mm. but by christ's faithfulness mm. which gives me a lot more reassurance <laughs> to be honest because <laughs> that isn't going to fail all, even yeah. though <laughs> um just when i think about that question of faith and trust you know um, I'm, I'm taking back to the first time i went to spring harvest and i wasn't a christian at that point mm. um but i was walking with um um, we're well, walking back to the chalets with um, someone who was a local preacher um, and he was maybe in his 30s. And anyway, um, I said to him, because as I say, at this time I was not a Christian at all and I was a bit sceptical, you know. Mm. I just wanted the free holiday really to Butlins. Funnily enough, and, I became uh, a Christian for a free holiday. Free holiday, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, that's the theme. And <laughs> I said to him, you know, what would you do if, because obviously he was banning on about faith to me and you should be a Christian. I was like, yeah. So I just said to him, you know, what would you do if you got to the end of your life and there was nothing mm. like there was none of the heaven that you'd hoped in and, and none of that sort of faith side of things it was just nothing and and god wasn't really there and he, you know he, he said he, he thought about it for a bit and then he said but actually um i have faith that there will be but if there isn't that's okay because i would have lived my whole life um having faith in the fact that I was really loved mm. and that God knew me and loved me and that that brought me some sort of comfort and changed my whole way of thinking and living and that sort of thing. Mm. And that's what made me think, oh, yeah, all right, then I'll give I'll this give Christian a malarkey a go. Yeah, but, <laughs> but just that powerful testimony of actually, I have faith that there will be, but if there isn't, I can live with that because mm. I spent a life thinking God loved me, even yeah. if God wasn't there. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think that's... <laughs> Yeah. A really important question, thinking about what kind of things we have faith mm. in. Because, um, as you said, faith in God changes fundamentally everything. Yeah. About who we are, about the way we see the world, about the way we see other people. But actually, faith in other things mm. probably doesn't change that no. much. No. It doesn't change how we live or how we see things. Or, or, in some ways, actually, I guess, could even 
change things for the worse rather than for the better. Yeah. But but so actually, faith isn't just kind of a passive thing of sitting around and kind of going, oh well, God will fix it. Everything yeah. will be sorted. It's fine. Um, but actually, it's about Whole having an active faith. Yeah. And and doing something as a response. As, as I've said, not our salvation. I don't think is reliant on that. But true faith mm. acts. Mm whether we kind of because uh -huh. because we've seen the difference god can make and i think if we had have gone through and read the whole hebrews 11 thing and seen all the different stories we would see that in the people that are mentioned yeah. they're known for their faith by their actions yeah and so the world looks at us as christians and doesn't see that we have faith because just there because, isn't any obvious i have faith in my exactly forehead. just just yeah. because we yeah. return it to church but they see that we have faith in the way that we live our lives and the way that we treat mm -hmm. others and the way that we talk about god mm -hmm. and so i think it's remembering that faith needs to be active in the way that we do it yeah great so did, we're so on to did we answer your square question about faith and trust i suppose <laughs> i forgot your answer now right at the start but i think i think so faith is bigger I'm teasing. I'm only teasing. Oh. Yeah, you've answered. Well done. Good and faithful I oracle. Ju I just want my gold star. I'll think of another difficult <laughs> question for tomorrow. So let's pray. Loving and faithful God, thank you that through all things we can have that faith and trust in you. That we can know that you are with us through the ups and downs of life. And that we can have hope because of who you are and because of all you do. Lord, we thank you for those ways in which we've known you at work in our lives over the last week. For the ways in which we've seen you move those mountains, calm the storms and bless us with your peace and love. And so, Lord, as we meet at the start of this new week, we lift before you all that is to come. All the challenges and difficulties. All the joys and celebrations. Knowing that we can have faith in your faithfulness to us. And so, Lord, we pray for this world. For the many ways in which darkness seems to have overcome the light. For the many ways in which pain and suffering seem to abound. Lord, at the beginning of this new week, with a number of new restrictions in Manchester and across the UK, we pray for those who are struggling with their mental health, with anxiety, with stress, with isolation, with loneliness. Lord, in those times of true challenge, may they know your peace. And may they know your love for them that will never let them go. Lord, we pray especially this morning for all of those for whom isolation and restrictions are not a choice. For those who are housebound most days of their lives, relying on others to have any sense of freedom. May they know themselves truly loved by you as well. May they know your presence even when they feel completely alone. And Lord, we pray for all the people in this country who are worried about their jobs or their businesses, about where the next meal may come from. About having enough, having to make a choice between heating their homes or feeding their families. Lord, through all this uncertainty, 
may we know your faithfulness. May they know your Holy Spirit present with them. And that you hold all things in your loving hands. Gracious God, at the start of this new week, this community of love and care, lift up the names on our hearts this morning. God, we pray for Jean, for Jack's family and friends, for Frida, for David and Janet, for Sue and Clive, for Jeff and Joy, for Alan, for Rob and Dan, for Ingrid's mum, for Sharon's dad, for Michelle and Tim and their family, for Doris, for Sandra and Paul, for Susan and Nigel, for David and Sharon, for Jill, for Scarlett, for Danny, for Daniel, for Joanna's son and daughter-in-law, for Marissa's family and friends, for William, for Tom and Maddie, and for Shirley's grandson. God, although we pray these things out loud, we know that you already know these people and their situations. You know their needs. And so we pray that they will see your hope, your love, your comfort, your mercy, and your presence with them today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In all of the concerns, brokenness and heartbreak in this world, we cling on to you as our anchor. Just as the trees hope their leaves will appear again, we hope also in you, our creator. In all of the anxiety and stress of this season before us, we keep our eyes fixed on you. Just as the robin hops and flies, seeking direction, we are guided by the spirit of wisdom. In all of the coldness and darkness of this autumn season, we seek your light and love. Just as we must prepare with our coats and scarves, we remember also to put on our armour of God. In all the death and loss of autumn, help us to remember and trust in your promise of new life. Just as flowers will bloom again in all of their beauty and splendour, we hope in your full glory yet to be revealed. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked. Or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water. Which yield their fruit in its season. And their leaves do not wither. In all that they do they prosper. So we go in thankfulness with words of praise on our lips, in awe of our creator God, by whose hands we enjoy this world's beauty and splendour. In, In the, the name, name of God, God creator, creator, redeemer and sustainer. And sustainer. Amen. Amen.